I'm Parneet Jaggi. Welcome to this video on Virginia Woolf as we are going to be studying her essay Professions for Women as a part of our syllabus. So before we initiate the essay, uh, let's know a little bit about the life and works of Virginia Woolf. We know Virginia Woolf as a famous popular essayist and novelist. And for her modernist classics, including uh, the novels like Mrs. Dalloway, To the Lighthouse and Orlando. But also we know her for her pioneering feminist works like A Room of One's Own. Uh, so when we look at her life, it was not a very smooth and happy life. Adeline Virginia Woolf, born 25th January 1882, was an English writer, considered one of the more important modernist 20th century authors and also a pioneer in the use of the stream of consciousness as a narrative device. Uh, while she was born in 1882, she was raised in a remarkable household. Her father, Sir Leslie Stephen was a historian and an author, as well as one of the most prominent figures in the golden age of mountaineering. Julia's, uh, sorry, Wolf's mother, Julia Princip Stephen, had been born in India and later served as a model for several pre-Raphaelite painters. She was also a nurse and wrote a book on this profession. So we see that her parents were uh, held in esteem in society. They were extremely well connected socially as well as artistically for their works and their standing. Her father was a friend to the famous uh, writer William Thackeray, the father of his first wife who died unexpectedly, and George Henry Lewis as well as many other noted thinkers of that time. Now, as a young girl, we see Virginia as a very curious and playful and light-hearted girl. She started a family newspaper, the Hyde Park Gate News, to document her family's humorous anecdotes and happenings in daily life. At the age of 13, in 1895, she had to cope up with the sudden death of her mother from rheumatic fever, which led to her first mental breakdown and the loss of her half-sister Stella, who had actually become the head of the family household two years later. Now, while we look at her dealing with her personal losses, we see that she still continued studying. And she went on with, his studies, with her studies in German and Greek, Latin, at the Ladies' Department of King's College, London. And this study, this four-year term of her study actually introduced her to a handful of radical feminists at the helm of educational reforms. In 1904, her father died from stomach cancer, which again contributed to another emotional setback which led to Wolf being institutionalized for a brief period. So we see that her dance between literary expression and personal desolation would now continue for the rest of the life. In 1905, she began professional writing. She contributed for the Times Literary Supplement. After her father's death, Wolf's sister and brother sold the family home in Hyde Park Gate and purchased a house in the Bloomsbury area of London. Now, during this period, when <clears throat> they stayed at the Bloomsbury area, Virginia met several members of the Bloomsbury group, which was a circle of intellectuals, artists and writers, and it included the famous art critic Clive Bell, also the novelist E.M. Foster, the painter Duncan Grant, the biographer Lytton Strachey, economist John Maynard Keynes and essayist Leonard Wolf, among others. Then we see that amongst this Bloomsbury group, we see Virginia getting closer to Leonard Wolf. 
and eventually they get married in 1912. And several years before marrying Leonard, Virginia had already begun working on her first novel, whose original title was Melimbrosia. After nine years and innumerable drafts, this novel was released in 1915 as The Voyage Out. Now, two years later, after the publication of this novel, the Wolfs bought a used printing press and established Hogarth Press, their own publishing house, which operated out of their home, Hogarth House. Virginia and Leonard published some of their writing as well as the work of Sigmund Freud, Catherine Mansfield and T.S. Eliot in their press. Now when we talk about her literary work, literary output, we find her as the writer of the modernist classics of the century that included novels like Mrs. Dalloway, To the Lighthouse, Orlando as well as the pioneering feminist works like A Room of One's Own and Three Guineas. But if we look at her personal life, she still suffered bouts of deep depression till the end. And finally, in 1941, at the age of 59, she committed suicide. So this was how we look at the works of Virginia Woolf, through the insight into her life because she had a checkered and an, um, far from smooth career. Although she belonged to an esteemed and elite and educated family, yet she had her own uh, share of suffering, which is very well reflected in her works also. So we'll take up the detailed analysis of the essay Professions for Women written by Virginia Woolf in the coming video. Thank you for now.